Do you really need to get a computer science degree to become a software developer or a software engineer? First and foremost, I would like to share with you my story. So my story, it was pretty much that one. I ended up taking the, the route of going to university and taking, it wasn't a computer science degree, but it was an IT degree. So in that degree, you, you, you get the chance to learn different things, such as programming, databases, networks, a little bit of everything, basically, that, that, is, that comes to the IT war. So I came uh, during the spring for my first, first semester, and really, I didn't really get to learn anything related to IT uh, the first semester. Mainly, they're going to teach you stuff related to the core classes, if you haven't taken those or you haven't got gotten credit for those classes so it's gonna be like classes such as history uh, it's gonna be for example english stuff like that core classes that you must have in order to that, that are part of the curriculum that you must have i really started taking technology related classes but it wasn't directly with the school in fact it was during my summertime during my summertime i was playing semi-professional soccer with with a team down in San Antonio and in reality there was so much time for me that I didn't know what to do plus I didn't have a lot of money at the same time so the only thing that I had with me was a computer my laptop and and Wi-Fi internet right so I found this free online course and it wasn't the same as uh, several of these online courses that we're seeing nowadays it's a video uh, online course but it was it had a curriculum it had all of this information pretty much you had to read pretty much complete the work that it was it was expected for you to do every week right and it was a website uh, development course so i did that i got to learn uh, some html css and javascript uh, during that time now i went back to school second semester and i started learning about some programming and it was python if i'm not wrong yes it, it was python in fact let me tell you that that course uh, they're gonna we're not, you're not gonna get farther than learning the basics of programming and specifically in python you're, you're not gonna get far in fact it's gonna take a lot of time to go by past a lot of basic things that can be learned easily in a free online course in a free tutorial online i mean things that you can really learn the main reason is because oftentimes those courses you you will have different different kinds of students you, it's not just it students sometimes it, or students from different degrees join that class for example i think that uh, digital media and arts as well they need to take that class as part of the curriculum and so you will have a mix of different different students learning this this programming language the basics i mean i'm telling you basic not not nothing crazy i mean it's gonna take a lot of time it's gonna take a lot of time just going past if conditions or the arrays just the arrays in itself and if you're not familiar with what's an array if you're really totally new like if you're a person who pick things quick it shouldn't take you that long but it will take people a lot of time we'll be talking about two dimensional arrays and then three dimensional arrays and it will spend uh, half of a semester uh, staying in the same topic just because people won't get it won't get in that quick so you will see that is slow the learning process in school is gonna be slow especially if you are interested in programming related careers slash software developer career having said that i'm not sure if what you're gonna get from school is gonna be enough in reality it is not gonna be enough i can totally guarantee you that you're gonna as soon as you start working you're gonna realize that everything that you have learned in the school and it's so far from the reality especially as a software developer now i'm going to share with you some of the different routes that are available for you if you are still interested on becoming a software developer and you don't really need or want to take the route of going to a school going to 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 a university a college wait for four years or go to four for four years spend that much money uh, oftentimes the school here in the u.s it's somewhere about 25 slash thirty thousand dollars a year if not more based on what kind of university you go so that means that it's gonna be roughly about one hundred thousand dollars worth of education at the same time you're not gonna get the education that you need in order to become really prepared 
for a software engineer, software developer career. Now, I think that the reason why a lot of people take the university route is because it is perceived as a higher education. It is perceived that you're gonna get, they're gonna teach you everything that you need in order to be prepared for your for your first job, right? No, I, I don't think so. Especially in this career, software engineer career, especially in that career, I don't believe that uh, it's it's gonna be a good route for you. In fact, I'm gonna share with you some of the different routes that are available for you and you can pick which one of them is the one that best suits for you based on. So option number one is gonna be going to a bootcamp. So what's a bootcamp? A bootcamp oftentimes they specialize on preparing software developers, getting people trained on with all the skills that they need to have to become a, a software developer and get ready to, to, to find a job and start pretty much producing uh, right away for those for the company whatever, comp whatever company that they they hire now oftentimes the bootcamp can last between eight weeks 12 14 weeks even 16 weeks the average price of going to a bootcamp it, it costs about eight eight thousand to twenty four thousand it depends on on the quality of the bootcamp in average it's somewhere about fourteen thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars by the way that's excluding any external costs like such as transportation and uh, i don't know housing i mean if you need to to move to a different city to go to that to that boot camp or to a specific boot camp then that's not included another thing to take into consideration is that sometimes boot camps can be for free but there's a little bit of a trade-off and the trade-off is that as soon as you get your first job as a software developer they will take a chunk or a percentage of that of your salary of that job so there are different options if you don't have really money to to, to pay for to afford going to a, to a boot camp they have different alternatives and i think that some of them have payment options as well available so you have to take a look at that one of the cool things about going to a boot camp is that they prepare the stu their students with the skill sets that they need to be successful at their career so they're gonna t teach you about the back end the front end the database if you're probably gonna be a full stack developer probably gonna teach you either react or angular or view even Vue.js uh, for the front end for the back end it might teach you about dotnet node.js express go on their database probably is gonna be mysql or mongo database or it's gonna be sql even i want you to remind you something is that you have about three to four months worth of boot camps education that's gonna be a lot of content not including that you probably have to learn a little bit of html css for four months getting all this education i mean it sounds amazing but in reality that means that you're gonna probably put a lot of hours every single day and i'm not saying just not even five hours, six hours, eight hours that is regular for a job here, but it's gonna be probably about 10 hours. Uh, I'm not joking about that. You're gonna spend a lot of time. Uh, of course, it depends on how fast you pick the concepts and how you are able to, to retain information, correlate things and make things work and, and seeing that you're really making progress in, in, in the learning all of these technologies. But in reality, if you're really new, man, that, that takes that takes a lot of time if you're going to a bootcamp you expect going for 10 hours a day pretty much coding all the time spending a lot of time in the computer and uh, working with a lot of other students for a long time so you're going to the high intense coding school another thing that i like about these boot camps is that they prepare you for interviews they pretty much guide you on the process of what you need to do in order to find your first job what you need to do for your portfolio how to present your portfolio how to write your resume what to showing your resume how to be prepared for your interview how to network as well so that's kind of cool because uh, oftentimes people who, who, who have been in the tech field are the ones who are running this boot camp so they already know how the things work or they're gonna tell you what exactly you're gonna expect off of that so you're not pretty much out of the loop like okay what what happening here i was not expecting this or i was not expecting uh these kind of questions uh for for my interview if you start taking a look at how much it takes uh to go to school versus going to a boot camp the price difference is gonna be massive like you decide to go to a college four years paying about 25 30 thousand dollars a year think about just going to a boot camp boot camp is about three to four months and in reality a semester is worth of four months about that 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 amount of time if you decide to go to school so you're pretty much paying just for one semester 
of let's say going to school and it will take you about roughly fifteen thousand fourteen thousand dollars average pretty much you're already saving there oftentimes a school can cost about that amount for just one semester about ten thousand dollars a thousand dollars twelve thousand dollars it depends on the school but it, it's a, a, along those lines in reality you're paying just one semester of university if you decide now another route that can be possible for you is to take an internship even if you don't really have experience as a software developer if you are able to find an internship it doesn't have to be even paid internship if it's a non-paid internship it could be fantastic as well the reason why is because yes you might not be you, you might not have the skill sets right away you have an internship you realize that you get to learn so much i mean pretty much you you, you learn stuff you learn stuff from day one and with job experience right you're gonna learn from people who are in the field who are doing who are working with software on a daily basis we're gonna get a true understanding of how the development process goes and of course some of those things you're not gonna be able to pick right away and it's gonna be tough but at the same time you are technically already working even though if it's for free if you start thinking about it you're getting a free education and the only thing that you probably have to pay is just transportation every day and just just go to that internship think about it you have a lot of money you get free education real work experience isn't it that good instead of just going to a school they teach you a lot of this stuff but then you don't really have the job job experience oftentimes job experience matter most i think it's fantastic to take into consideration a non-paid internship don't, don't don't think about non-paid as a bad thing because everybody has to get paid if they work for do work for somebody but in reality if you're getting actually trained for free and you don't have a lot of money that's an actually an excellent opportunity for you to level up and to get up to speed on your software developer software engineer career now another cool thing about the internship is that if you start showing merits and you start showing that you're you're leveling up your skill set you can be hired by the same company because they already know you because they already have seen your work ethic they have seen how fast you can learn you can pick things pretty much they already know that you know how the work company works that's that's a lot of time that they they can save during the process of hiring somebody else getting them up to speed up to the company culture companies um internal development processes and stuff like that so that's another thing that that companies look for i mean if they have an employee they've been training for a while i mean they they would like to to retain that for as long as possible because they they know that they they have the skill sets for that that company requires uh to get the job done there's another option and it's to take an online course you can find find udemy you can find skillshare you can find even youtube classes you can find you can find a lot of content if you don't want to find uh, tutorials out there if you don't have you want to find a course out there is because you're simply lazy and you don't really want to put on put in the work or an online course what i do recommend for you is that literally you you don't find free stuff go ahead take money out of your pocket and invest it pay for that online course oftentimes whenever we pay for something that means that it took a little bit of us in order to get something in this case education and it's the same thing if you go to a school i mean how come you're gonna go to school and you're gonna pay 20 25 30 35 thousand dollars a year to pay for education and you're not gonna do that with just paying like probably between i don't know 10 to 250 dollars a month or not a month for the online course and in reality that's kind of like the average but in fact you can just pay that you're saving a lot of money and even if it's up to a thousand for the whole online course that still is a bargain these online courses oftentimes the way they are structured is that you're gonna have an instructor and you pretty much gotta make sure that your instructor has experience as a software developer that has been working in the field for a long amount of time that they are currently working on the field and whether or not his his or her style of teaching is easy to follow so that's one of the things that you have to take into consideration there another thing to pay attention is that and it's one of the things that i really don't like about these online courses is this is how the structure they're gonna have a, a project they're gonna teach you all these things that you have to do in order to get that project we can call it web application mobile application game they're gonna teach you everything that you need to have 
uh, using a specific programming language, specific framework. So for example, you might have a course that is fully de dedicated on Angular, for example, and they're gonna teach you about how to develop a mobile or a web application using Angular. And they're gonna teach you all of these concepts about Angular components. They're gonna teach you about the basic as well, the if statements, if else statements, switch statements. They're gonna teach you about, of course, advanced uh, stuff related to, to Angular, but they're not gonna be teaching you very very like they're not gonna really dig so much into the topics of the framework of of the programming language they're gonna teach you the main things that you need to know in order to to understand the the technology another thing that they're gonna teach you is that they're gonna of course you're gonna follow this this project and there's a good thing a bad thing with that yes you're gonna be building something and that's cool like Man, whenever you start building your first tic-tac-toe game or whenever you first develop your, your first website on your own, I mean, you're going to feel you're gonna feel good. I mean, you're building something. But the problem with that is that you're following, you're following a scheme. The problem with this is that you just pretty much are copying and pasting, copying and pasting, copying and pasting. And for some people, uh, that, that might work a little bit, but at the same time, they are not getting the full education that they could get out of that. Ideally, and what I usually recommend to people is, yes, take that online course, follow that scheme. But as soon as you start taking that online course, start thinking about working on a project on your own, separate from that online course. So if I'm, once again, going back to Angular, if I'm taking that zero to, to master uh, Angular course, uh, web development, I'm going to start thinking about, okay, I'm going to work on my weather app from day one, even if it's not part of the, the curriculum. So if they're going to start teaching about like, okay, how to communicate uh, between, uh, how, how to share data between components, okay, you, I'm going to start trying to do some, some stuff related to that in my weather app. I'm just going to force myself to do that. And the reason why is because you're getting out of the, the that box that they're pretty much putting you in if you get to learn something out of what they are teaching you great but if you don't i mean it is your own problem <laughs> pretty much the other thing is that it depends on the online course but you're not gonna have like dedicated person answering your questions right away this could be good for you or bad for you it could be good why because in that way you don't become overly dependent on somebody answering your questions especially in this career oftentimes you have to figure out things you have to find google things out find out answers now the bad thing is same that oftentimes that you're not going to be able to figure it out stuff on your own sometimes maybe they, they that online course has a forum or has an internal uh, chat where you can share your doubts questions stuff like that but it might take them a lot of time or it might take it might be quicker it just depends you have something to take into consideration. Another cool thing about these online courses is that you can go at your own pace. So for example, if you are currently working, I mean, you, you, you need to have a job, you have to pay the bills and stuff like that, but you can't, I mean, it's not an option for you to, to completely stop your, your job and going to school or going to a bootcamp, going to a non-paid internship then you can take these online courses uh, during your own time. Yes, it's going to be good if you commit to complete. Since it's something that you're going to be doing on a daily basis or on a full-time basis as you do as when you go to work, then oftentimes you're going to feel like, oh man, uh, I'm tired of work. I'm not sure if I really want to spend time for this online course, doing a little bit of coding here. I, I'm too tired. So that might be a little bit of a problem. And that's going to be more about you, where you want to really switch careers or you really want to become a software developer. Either way, you, you have to put, put in time to educate yourself and to get the skills needed for that career. So that's going to be the only bad side thing that I, I could see there. Those were all of the alternatives that you have in order to, to become a software engineer or a software developer. And the reality is that you don't really have to have a computer science degree. In reality, companies don't really care much about uh, a degree at all. They, they care that you finish stuff, you, you, make, you make them make money. That's what they care about at the end. So if you're thinking about going to university with the thoughts of becoming a software engineer, I personally would not recommend it to you. Uh, it just depends. Uh, some people like it, some people uh, prefer to 
to just go regular to a class and is it really what you need is it gonna really what is gonna set yourself up for a successful career it's up to you again people have different situations different circumstances different ways of thinking and they will decide which is best for them but as my as for my experience i would not recommend you to go and pay a lot of money to a university to try to become a software engineer thank you for watching hopefully this video gave you different options for you to get education or to find education in order to to become a software developer if you like what you saw please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel if you like to be notified for future videos about software development career tips uh, tutorials and everything related to software development from my experience uh, that i could share with you uh, also i would like to see your your comments in the section below please share them with me i would like to read them and i'll be attentive if you are interested in me talking a specific topic in the future see you until the next time